Hey, what is going on guys? Greg Jenkins here from Monkey Pod Marketing and I've got a, uh, a quick scenario I want to demonstrate for you uh, where I have been using dynamic content in my campaigns. Um, in case it gives you ideas or inspiration for where dynamic content might be a fit uh, for, for, for you and, and your business. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, dynamic content is a feature that was rolled out a little bit over a year ago at this point, but they rolled it out kind of quietly. So a lot of uh, Infusionsoft or, or Max Classic, as it is now called, users have not discovered the, the true power and potential behind this feature. Um, so what I wanna share with you here is a quick and simple use case that might help you spot opportunities to use it in your own business. All right, so here is a campaign from a webinar that I ran yesterday. Um, and it basically, you know, it starts with a promotion. Uh, they click to register. I'm using plus this to register them into the Zoom webinar. Um, and then if they opt out, it stops the registration reminders. If they uh, register successfully, it moves them down here where they get a confirmation and a countdown to the event. And then they either attend or they do not attend. And plus this tags them accordingly. Uh, these sequences are just empty to uh, kind of capture people who attend or capture people who don't attend. Um, and then once I have the recording processed, which I you know have to have to do and, and edit the recording and host it in the members area, um, I send it to people uh, by you know linking up the the delivery sequence here. Now, um, in each of these emails, I have links to the recording. Um, and when I run these webinars for the OG membership, I host the recording two places. We live stream it into our private Facebook group, and then I also host it in their uh, members area uh, when they log into the MonkeyPod like members site. So there's two different links there. Um, the tricky part about yesterday's webinar is that um, I had a guest presenter, my good friend Jamie DeBose, shout out to zenplicitynow.com. Um, uh, we had a guest presenter and I let her invite her audience as well. So not just my members, but also you know anyone from her community who, who she thought might find this webinar valuable. Uh, but the tricky part for that is um, I can't send those people the normal links to the recording because they're not MonkeyPod members. So they won't have access to our Facebook group. They won't have access to the, the, the website. So what I wanted to do was send one email, but I needed to have different sets of links um, to take them to the recording in different locations, right? If you're a member, the links will take you to the membership area, but if you're not a member, um, then the link will take you to the Wistia uh, recording. So here's what I did. Um, I built the email out like normal, um, but I used dynamic content to section off different parts of the email. So what this little statement says is if the contacts tags IDs contain 659, which is my OG member tag. So if they have the OG member tag, then they can see this button, which takes them to the webinar archive in the membership area. And they can see this button, which takes them to the Facebook replay. Um, and it says the webinar replay includes the extra Q and A at the end, the Facebook version doesn't, right? So that's a message specifically for the OG members. And then I have the next part of the liquid uh, code or the dynamic content code that says otherwise, right? If they don't have this tag, then they see this section, which just links them directly to the Wistia uh, hosted version of that video. So they still get a button that they can click with the webinar replay, but it doesn't require them to log in. It's, it's unique to, to where they are, right? Um, and then it ends the liquid statement. So the, the key here is if they have an OG tag, show them these pieces, right? And then if they don't, show them this button. And um, a lot of people haven't discovered this, but when you use dynamic content, uh, you can actually break it up into different sections. It does have to be used in the text sections, but you can split it across paragraphs, which allows you to show these buttons to people who have the tag and show this button to people who don't. So if I preview this email, um, it's gonna show, it should just show this button uh, because I don't have the tag on my user record. So if we preview, it just shows the second button, right? It doesn't show them the links that they wouldn't have access to. And similarly, when I send this email out, only the buttons that are relevant for the recipient are gonna show up. So what that does for me is it allows me to build one email knowing that only the relevant content is gonna display based on what I know about those recipients. Um, the other thing I did with liquid content here is something simple that you guys can all do as well, is I built out 
um, some modifiers onto the first name merge field that uh, will ensure it only has the first letter capitalized. So uh, you probably have experienced this when prospects sign up and they use all capital letters or all lowercase letters. And then when you merge in their name into an email, it merges it as they entered it, all lowercase or all capitals. And obviously that reeks of automation. So one simple change I'm doing is um, uh, using liquid content to make sure that it is all made lowercase and then just the first letter is capitalized. So I've, st I've started building my templates using this as my merge field rather than the, uh, the tilde um, first name or contact dot first name one rather than using this, right? So a couple of small changes here, but I wanted to uh, recap these because uh, I just really feel strongly about the power behind dynamic content, and I haven't found enough people adopting this feature yet. So I figure the more use cases and examples we can provide, uh, the more opportunities you'll spot within your own business to take advantage of this as well. Now, um, as I was getting ready for this video, it occurred to me that I actually have another opportunity to simplify this even further, right? So rather than having different sequences for attended or missed, right? The only real change in my email is in the, for the people who attended, I say, uh, I hope you found it valuable as well, right? Because I know that they were there. Um, and then for the people who don't attend or who didn't attend, I say, um, uh, we missed you, but we managed our best anyway, right? And pretty much everything else is identical. So it occurred to me that I could consolidate um, this whole process down into one singular email that goes to everyone. And I could use dynamic content to display the right version of that based on whether or not they attended. So let's do that here. Um, I'll build it out and you can, you know, watch or, or take notes and then, you know, spot opportunities to, to do the same thing to personalize your messaging. So uh, when you use dynamic content, it starts with the builder here under the marketing section and we'll go, uh, it's a contact if, you know, data point that we're going to be using. And down at the very bottom, you have tag names and tag IDs. I almost always use tag IDs just because it's, it's a number rather than the text. And so that makes it harder for me to make a mistake. Um, and then you want to, in this case, we want to, rather than modifying the data, we want to use conditionals, which means it's going to be uh, either or, you know, it's conditional content. Okay. So that's wrong. Um, <laughs> we don't want to add it to the, to the builder until we have set up our statement here. So if the uh, contacts tag IDs contain, and then I've got my tag IDs here. So tag ID 2595. So if the uh, tag IDs contact uh, con contains 2595, um, and then I don't need another statement. You could say, or if it contains this, or if it contains that, um, but all I need here is, did they attend? If so, we're gonna show them one section, and if they didn't attend, we're gonna show everyone else the other. So this would be, um, we missed you, and this would be, uh, thanks for attending, right? And those, types of um, you know senti sentiment or whatever I was saying there. So once you have your code built out, you copy it here, and then we can jump back into our campaign. Um, and I'll go into that first email, the recording for people who attended. And we'll just change this section. So rather than I hope you found it valuable too, uh, we'll pop that code in there that I just copied. And this piece, I hope you found it valuable too, goes um, here within those, uh, the first section of that, that liquid code. So if they have that tag saying that they attended, we say, I hope you found it valuable too. And then um, if they don't have that tag, it means we know that they didn't attend. So I'll say, we missed you, um, but we managed to uh, forge ahead anyway. Um, we missed you, it was, tough, but we managed to forge ahead anyway, something like that, right? So now what I've done is I've, you know, added the context here to reflect whether or not they were there. So it frames up the recording that I'm about to deliver uh, based on whether, you know, I think that they saw it already live or are just waiting for the replay. Um, and I didn't read the, the rest of this copy, but I don't think there's anything else in there that needs to change. If there was, I could copy this structure 
And, you know, I could add something down here that said like, hey, thanks for joining live, or maybe you can catch the next one live. I could, you know, further personalize the content just by adding those, that same structure around other pieces of copy. So once I've done that, um, this recording is no longer just for attended. This is for everyone. And this sequence is no longer just for attended. This is for everyone. And I no longer need this. I no longer need this. This would be uh, the, uh, this was just the holding tank. So this is just an empty sequence to put people into after they get that tag. So we could uh, set it up like that so that the same email goes to everyone, but I actually could consolidate these tags as well. So I just you know break it down to one goal because they're not going different places. So that would mean updating this tag goal to be listening for either of the, uh, whether they re uh, missed or attended tags. And there you go. So that would be the updated version of this campaign using uh, the dynamic content to further uh, personalize the, the recording email. So it not just reflects um, whether they're an OG member or not in terms of where the recording is hosted, but it also you know adapts the content to reflect whether or not they attended the webinar and are watching the replay, uh, you know, because they want more out of it or they're watching it for the first time. So um, I know that this was a, you know, deep dive into a super simple example, but the point that I'm trying to make is that dynamic content is a powerful tool. Um, there's use cases like this all over our campaigns. I started this video with the intention of highlighting just one example, but in the you know nature of 15 minutes, I also stumbled onto another um, scenario where dynamic content could further simplify things. So um, I hope that you guys are, are, are seeing the value here and are starting to um, incorporate it into the way you think about visualizing your campaigns or, or, or modifying your campaigns, because it really does represent a lot of opportunity to simplify the way we we build and to improve the overall relevance of the the communications we're sending to our audience so if you have questions about this or ideas or use cases where where you have found dynamic content to be valuable for your own business please share them in the comments below later